G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. This is a news flash video. Yes indeed, I've just put out a video talking about the exciting announcement for Nikon users and especially Z9 users, although I do think uh, this technology can, might, should roll out to perhaps any other XP7 cameras. And that is that HE high efficiency and HE star high efficiency star is now compatible with more than just Nikon's own editing software, Nikon, Nikon's own raw editor. And ON1 or ON1 are the first company that I thought had support for these new file types. And I have to say thank you to BT Hathaway for saying, Matt, what are you talking about? I've been using these files ever since I got my camera, my Z9, two weeks ago. And I suddenly thought to myself, well, ah, yes, two weeks ago. That probably means something's quietly happened that, that it, it would appear that nobody has picked up Nikon rumors, Petapixel. Nobody's picked this information up, or I've missed it. But when I'm doing a Google, I can't find it. And that is that Adobe RAW, Lightroom, etc. now support high efficiency and high efficiency star. And this update, my guess is is maybe two, three, or four weeks old. And how does this come about? Well, Intupix, the people that create this compression algorithm which Nikon has licensed, released the libraries required for developers to be able to do this. They were released on the 8th or 9th of September, just five weeks ago, and then developers have to incorporate that. Now, I don't know if that's a one hour, one day, or one week, or one month process, but clearly, between then and two weeks ago, when BT got his Z9, Adobe quietly implemented this in an update, I'm guessing, to their camera raw. So hearing this information, I started Googling, and then I thought, well, I can't really find that much information, so I will download the latest of everything Adobe, and I will test it for myself. And lo and behold, it absolutely works. I was able to use HE star files natively in Lightroom and they looked absolutely fantastic. We've got the Z9 here, I've got the Atomus Ninja, we're going to record it. For those who don't really know what I'm talking about, what is HE and HE star? Well, to repeat, this is a new file format employed by Nikon. Uh, HE star is basically 60% of the size of a normal RAW file from a Z9 and to the best of my perception gives you almost exactly the same amount of latitude and file manipulation potential as the standard raw files, the lossless compressed. And then HE, which is even a, an even smaller file, so it's something like we go from around 50, 50 to 55 megabytes down to 30, 35 megabytes. And then the HE, standard HE non-star is 20, 22 megabytes, something like that. It does depend a little bit on what's in the file and it is a bit more, it does have a bit more of a loss about it. But I've never used that one because I, I, I just don't need to. Um, and really, I haven't used these files much at all because there hasn't been, my raw editor of choice hasn't been able to edit them, which is Capture One. Now, the fact that ON1 and Adobe now have support, and we can understand that these libraries are now out, I think there'll be a slew of updates from all of our favorite software manufacturers. Now, whether or not it's too late, for Capture One to incorporate it in their version 23 that's coming out in about a month, I don't know. But the fact that Adobe seems to have been able to implement it quite fast, they probably do things a little bit of a different way in the fact that uh, Camera Raw is their engine that drives all of their platforms, but Capture One would have the same sort of thing. Anyway, fingers are crossed that this library to allow support for this compression algorithm will now allow Capture One and other manufacturers that are yet to get there to do that job. So fingers crossed. I'm going to record a file. I'm going to whack it here on the M1 MacBook Pro using the SanDisk. And then we're going to have a very quick look at HE Star files running in Adobe Lightroom. And that's pretty cool, I reckon. Here we are over at the Z9 now and the photo shooting menu into raw recording menu. We'll go into the menu here and we have lossless compression, high efficiency star, or high efficiency. You can choose any of those that you want. Probably the one I'm going to most use is the one that's in the middle, high efficiency star. So we choose that one. 
And that's all you really get to see. When, you, when, it, when you're in here, it still says raw. You've got to make sure you're clear on which version you're using. So there we are, raw. And we're going to take a photo here. Doesn't matter, just one photo. That's it, that's all we're doing. Using the new Per Gear, which we're going to talk more about in a very soon episode. This thing's fast. It's fast and it's affordable. Okay, that's in. Now we're going to start screen recording here. Okay, we are recording. Here's some old files I've had in here from a long time ago. Uh, I'm not really a Lightroom user, so let's import. Import, add photo, there we go. Those ones. Okay, so there is our file. Uh, we can see it is in Lightroom. It is fully editable, as we would expect. With Nikon files, great level of dynamic range. And I have to say thanks to Joe. I mentioned to him the fact that this was now working on the desktop versions. And Joe said, all right, I'll jump in and see what Lightroom Mobile on iOS does. Here are two beautiful images captured on the Z9 of birds processed by Joe on iOS. So I thought I'll jump onto my iPad looking at the same file that we look at a little bit later. And lo and behold, here it is. We can see up in the corner it says it's a 31 megabyte file and this is it working just beautifully. We can adjust obviously all the aspects that we can normally adjust. Now I think the way that Adobe works on iOS is these are actually proxy files brought down from the cloud unless you've actually loaded the file in there. So I'm not quite sure whether we're working with the full version or a proxy Proxy, but then it all populates around all of your Lightroom cloud connected versions. So whether you're on iOS, iPhone, iPad or desktop, it goes across all of them. That's pretty cool. And if we go to the Adobe Camera Raw compatibility site, the, what is supported, and we go all the way down to the bottom of the list, we can see here the Z9 and it has a note and the only operating systems that seem to be not supported at this point in time are Windows ARM 64 and ARM version 7 and x86 for Android. Otherwise, it would seem compatibility is everywhere else. Good work, Adobe. I'm very pleased to say this is a major advancement for the Z9, but it's also a major advancement for Nikon and all Z users. As I said at the top of this video, my guess is because of this, this raw compressor compresses and uncompresses on the fly. That means it kind of does it instantaneously. Now, it would be my guess you need some processing power to do that. And that would include the Xpeed 7 being part of that equation, which right now the Xpeed 7 can only be found in the Z9. If you're wondering if this is going to come to a camera for you in the future, my best guess is it will. It's obviously more aimed at enthusiasts, hobbyists, semi-professionals and professionals, people who use RAW and people who just use JPEG, well, they wouldn't be interested in this. So it might only come to some cameras, not all, but I think all Nikon users should be excited because if you can get a RAW file, that's almost half the size, almost half the size, but I don't know, let's say, 99% of the quality, 99.5, 99.9% of the quality, and uh, probably in most instances, it's 100% of the effective quality. This is great. It saves you money on buying cards because they don't have to be as big. It saves you money on hard drives for storing, and it saves you time on loading and offloading. And something that's 60% of the size, you know, that's significant. It's almost half. Great news, it's really great news for Nikon, Z9 users, and cameras that I suspect there's gonna be something coming sometime soon that will also benefit. And I'm hoping some, if not all, of those higher end cameras utilize this new file format. Are you an ON1? Are you an Adobe user? Or are you now, like me, a very expectant Capture One user, desperately crossing our fingers, hoping that Capture One do the right thing in their version 23 so we don't have to wait another whole year for them to get this support out because this is a really compelling thing let's say that you shoot 200 gigabytes of files for a client this now makes it roughly 120 gigabytes for the client that's a massive change let me know in the comments below i'd love to hear what your thoughts are around this technology we never really talked about it a lot when it came out so much was going on with the Z9 when it was first released. I actually think this is one of these quiet 
sleeper features that is just super fantastic and affects all of us and it affects all of us profoundly on an ongoing basis. Thus, it's one of the most important features. And it's easy. It's funny how we forget these things. We talk about autofocus and those sorts of things so much, but the bleeding edge autofocus is right at the edge. It only affects some people some of the time. This affects all people all of the time. And hang around just for a little bit longer if you don't really know what this format's all about, and I will just do a quick re-explanation. Otherwise, thank you so much for being here. It's been so good to see you. And if this is your first time here, I'd, I'd love to see you again. So please do share, subscribe, and like, and keep on creating. Golly gosh, we've got the best tools you could possibly have in this day and age. And that sun, it's just popped out. We've had crazy rains and floods here. And now the sun's popped out right at the end of my video. Good to see you. Okay, so just to reiterate what the differences are in the raw files for the Z9, and as we've talked about, we hope this rolls into other XP7 cameras. That's my best guess. Will it be all of them? Who knows? That's just a choice. Nikon have employed lossless compressed as just sort of the standard baseline for the Z9. Then we have high efficiency star and high efficiency. So they are three different levels of compression. Obviously, lossless compressed RAW. What that means is you've got a RAW file, it will compress it, but it'll only compress it so much that there will be no loss in image quality at all. That's what it means. So it's a great file type. We'll start here with this file. This is 7755, and it is a lossless compressed RAW file, as we can see over here. And it's 46.9 megabytes. That's what this software says. If we jump out to the finder, we can see it's 49.2. So I just wonder if that's some sort of wrapper that the file's in, so they just get uh, actually a little bit l larger on your hard drive. But in all cases, they're slightly larger in the finder than they are actually in the software. Also part of that container might be a JPEG preview that's generated by the camera so you can fly through it and look at the images without having to render the RAWs. That's another possibility. This is the highest quality file. Then here we are looking at, and as we can see over here, this is the RAW high efficiency quality priority and it's now down to 29.5 megabytes. In the finder we can see it's 31, that's the wrapper. And then the final one here is, this is just the high efficiency and it's down to 18.6. And with all of these, we can still see that they are 45 megapixel files. So just keep your eye up here at the top. They're all still the same pixel count, but very different file sizes. But how much do they vary? And we will look at that more closely in another video. And here is raw, lossless compressed and high efficiency raw side by side. I don't know, we're looking pretty close up. No obvious differences right now, but we will do a full test of this at a later date. Those files are 50 to 55 megabytes, give or take, they can change, depending on what's in the scene. The next is high efficiency star, and what that is doing is it's compressing harder. So it's looking more at what it can get away with. It's thinking about it really hard. And those files, as I've said, are about 40% smaller. They're between 30 and 35 megabytes. Again, it depends on what's in the image. Look, I haven't done a lot of testing, but it's really hard to tell the difference between a raw, uh, the lossless compressed raws and the high efficiency star raws. Now, I've heard some discussion that maybe in the shadow areas, if you're pushing them super hard, you can see the difference. But if you're just doing standard exposures, I really don't think there's gonna be much difference. And standard high efficiency, well, those files are coming in at 20, 22, 25 megabytes, again, somewhere around there, depending on the file size. So we're talking, they are less than half the size. They are more compressed. I've never spent any time with these files, and I believe they are more compressed. And of course they should be when they're half the size or even smaller. So you can kind of choose what works for you. Like if you're shooting a lot of sports, uh, just things that are just super high speed. If you're a birder, these file types, they make a lot of sense because in both of those sorts of things, there is a lot of the frame that's kind of probably background out of focus. And this is where compression works really well just to save you space. And you don't need to collect all of that out of focus background 
at the highest quality available. So there's so many applications. I think portraiture it would also, high efficiency star would work super well. We'll do more testing. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do more testing around this sort of thing. But uh, yeah, super exciting. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for those that hung in to talk a little bit about high efficiency and high efficiency star. I, I'm, I'm just really pumped that this has gone from something that was like, oh, okay, this is a great feature, but only Nikon is employing it in their software too. It sounds like everybody's going to have it within the next, I don't know, one to 12 months They'll, at worst. Like I have no idea what every company is doing. And again, to reiterate, Capture One, if you can get it in version 23, you're going to make a lot of people happy. All right. See you later.